Invincible might just be one of, if not the, coolest concept for a comic book series ever conceived. While comics like Watchmen and The Boys ask the question, what if superheroes were real? Invincible asks, what if a fictional comic book world had real life consequences? As anyone watching this video should already know, recently Amazon adapted Robert Kirkman and Cory Walker's beloved Image comic books into an animated show for streaming. I watched all eight episodes and mostly liked it, but I did take issue with quite a few aspects of it. And that is why I'm here today to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Amazon's Invincible. To start off, I will let you know that it is incredibly difficult to talk about this show without spoiling anything. I mean, you could argue that the trailer for this show already spoiled it for you, but if you're someone who still knows very little about Invincible, turn this off right now and go read as many of the comics as you can. The spoilers begin now. Why? <sighs> For the most part, the Invincible show is incredibly accurate to the comics, often recreating scenes word for word and with an art style that perfectly captures the look of Cory Walker's art. There are a few changes, some for the worse, some for the better. I think the most obvious change is the placement of characters' introductions, and certain plot points are a bit different here. Cecile is introduced almost immediately in this show, when he's a character that was introduced far later in the comics. I think it works fine here, it was a change that I really had no gripes with. Characters like William are changed a bit here. He's Mark's best friend in the comics, and it takes him a while to come out of the closet, while well, here he's just openly gay from the start. I could see some people wanting it to be done the way it was in the comics, but I think with the day and age we live in, I see little problem with how it's executed here. Sure, he's kind of the stereotypical gay best friend at times, but at least he gets to be friends with a guy instead of a girl, so I guess it's fine. There are also some elements of the show that feel a little bit rushed, things that the comics had the time to explain that the show just quickly glances over. Like the way that they explain Adam Eve's powers here is just so vague that you'd think that she were the most powerful superhero on the planet. But the biggest change from the comics that fans will notice immediately is this scene. To my knowledge, the reveal of Omni-Man as a murderous psychopath doesn't happen until like issue 7 of the comics, while here it's at the end of the very first episode. Granted, the episodes are each like 45 minutes long, which is much longer than the average animated show, but it's still something that I felt came way too soon. Much of Invincible's original appeal for me was the way that it handled its build up to the violence, creating a comforting superhero world with something much more sinister hiding beneath the surface. Obviously the reason they made the decision to reveal the violent nature of the show by the end of the first episode was because they knew that adult viewers would only tune into the show if they knew it was violent. They literally sold the show around this, trying to catch the same crowd that liked the boys, which is a real shame. To me it really just proves the superiority of long form storytelling via comics versus TV shows. With comics it's almost all through word of mouth. There's like rarely trailers to get you interested in them. You just hear something is good or you like the art and you decide to check it out. But putting that complaint aside, which is also probably my biggest complaint, I will say that the voice cast here is perfection. J.K. Simmons, Sandra Oh, Stephen Yoon, everyone is perfectly cast here, especially Stephen Yoon. He's so good as Invincible and sounds exactly like how I imagine he'd sound while reading the comics. The show is animated by Skybound Entertainment, and as much as I think that it accurately captures the look of the comics, yeah, this animation isn't exactly the best. I hate critiquing animation of any sort because I don't doubt that whoever animated this put a ton of work into it. There's nothing easier than labeling animation that's just a bit lacking as lazy. Throughout this show you'll notice a lot of stiff movements, the weird use of CG people in the background, and frequent animation errors. Most notably, stuff could be in one set of frames and then missing in the next or changing location. It's really bad and becomes distracting at times. I'm not gonna blame the animators themselves though, I think it's more than likely that Skybound just wasn't given enough time by Amazon to make it look nice and fix up mistakes. Especially when you consider that each episode is 45 minutes, like that's gotta be difficult to complete. I'm really hoping the animators get more time to work on it for season 2 and 3, but seeing as how money is the top priority of any big studio, 
I highly doubt it. I can at least say that the action scenes for the most part look great. You can really tell that that's where a lot of the effort went towards, and I really hope that no one got PTSD while working on this. I think the last episode, while missing some essential details from the comics, still does an excellent job at investing you emotionally, mostly due to the great voice acting. No, th this doesn't make any sense. You love me. You love mom. I know you do. But I had forgotten just how outrageously violent Invincible could be, like god damn. The show still has some excellent writing for the most part, it's just that it's mostly due to Robert Kirkman's writing already being good. Yes, I believe Invincible suffers in animation and with some of the creative liberties taken, but I still enjoyed it. This might actually be a better show to watch if you haven't read the comics, because then most of my criticisms won't even apply to it. But you should still just read the comics anyway, I mean, considering that they're the better version of the story, at least to me. I rarely like to rate stuff I review, but to sum it up, this show would be like a 7 out of 10, while the comics would be at least a 9. But I'm fine with that. I'm still gonna be watching season 2, so I guess the show did all that it had to do for now. Thank you to everyone who watched. I have a lot of other videos on my channel. I do movie and TV reviews as well as some toy reviews as well, so feel free to check those out if you'd like to. Thank you all again and goodbye.